Now the story of 800 series begins in 1976. Our founder, John Bowers, was determined to improve upon the performance of the loudspeakers he'd been able to develop so far. So he initiated a then unprecedented three-year research project with no constraints. And the aim was to come up with the most advanced design possible. The end result was the Model 801, which emerged in 1979. It got its name very simply because it was the first generation of Bowers and Wilkins loudspeakers designed for the 1980s. Now, very quickly, it became hugely popular and successful with recording studios across the world. It wasn't originally designed as a studio monitor, but its unique configuration with a mid-range drive unit mounted inside a dedicated separate enclosure made it perfect for the task of really accurate monitoring of sound. Before long, Abbey Road Studios, Skywalker Sound, and many other famous studios across the world were using the loudspeaker to help create content. We have a saying that music that will soon be heard everywhere is heard first on Bowers and Wilkins loudspeakers, and it's the 801 that inspired that. Even if you've never been fortunate enough to hear either an 801 or any other 800 series diamond loudspeaker, the chances are you've experienced something that it has contributed to because this loudspeaker has been used to create some of the most famous pieces of film sound and music sound in the last 35 to 40 years. If you saw Return of the Jedi, if you saw Lord of the Rings, if you saw more recently Skyfall or 1917, the music scores for those films were made and monitored using 800 series loudspeakers. Similarly, from the music point of view, everything from Pink Floyd in their pomp to the contemporary Call of Celeste, it's all been done using 800 series loudspeakers. So of course, we've evolved 800 series over time. It's no longer just one model. Now there are multiple different variants within the 800 series lineup, depending on your requirement. Whether you have a large room or a smaller room, we have something to suit. At the same time, we've also added a whole series of advanced new technologies to try and improve performance. For example, in 1987, the addition of the Matrix cabinets. In 1998, the curved and iconic Nautilus cabinets, which have since become a hallmark of the range. In 2005, the addition of diamond tweeter dome technology with this advanced high frequency performance that again was so important to the range, we actually incorporated it into the model name, becoming 800 series diamond. And then most recently in 2015, our latest third generation of 800 series diamond with continuum mid-range cones. So that's the history of the range. Now it's time to take a look at the future. I'm gonna introduce you to the fourth generation of 800 series diamond. We begin with a five strong stereo model range of which the entry point is this, a stand mount design, the 805 D4. It has a 165 millimeter or six and a half inch mid base cone, plus a forward firing port, and it can be mounted on a stand or a tabletop. It's joined by a floor standing model, the 804 D4, which adds a dedicated FST mid range cone to the configuration plus twin base drive units. The next model up, is the 803 D4. This takes that same five inch mid-range cone found in the 804 and houses it in a dedicated mid-range enclosure we call the turbine head, adding maximum openness and spaciousness to the sound. Take that same configuration and scale it and you come to the 802 D4 with a six inch design in a larger turbine head for more output in bigger rooms, coupled to more base extension from twin eight inch base cones. And finally, there's the flagship model, the 801 D4, named, of course, after that iconic 801 from 1979. The flagship design, it has twin 10-inch base cones and a larger base enclosure for maximum extension in bigger spaces. Now, if you're a fan of films and you'd like to partner any of these stereo models with additional loudspeakers to build out a home theater, we offer a range of solutions. First, we have two dedicated 800 series diamond center channels. The smaller model, the HGM82, uses a five-inch cone and could be partnered very effectively alongside 804D4 and 803D4. The larger model, the HGM81, uses a six inch cone and can be partnered alongside 802D4 and 801D4. Now 800 series diamond is available in multiple finishes. There's the piano gloss back finish you can see here. That's joined by a rose nut finish, a very beautiful wood veneer. We'll have a white finish and a walnut finish to complete the set. We've also got new designs of magnetically attached grill, individual to each cone on each cabinet. Let's take a closer look at the design details. One key thing you'll notice that every model now has is an elongated tweeter on top form. 
It's longer than before to improve the acoustic performance, but also improve the design detailing. That's whether you've got a turbine head design or the floor standing and stand mount models at the entry part of the range, the 805 and the 804. That tweeter body, in fact, on those two designs goes all the way from the front to the back of the cabinet. The other thing you'll notice about both of these models is they now have a new shape, what we refer to as the reverse wrap form. We introduced it back in 2015 on the larger designs. We've now cascaded it into the 805 and the 804 as well. That means the driving units are placed at the front of a single and extreme curvature, and the crossover componentry lives at the back behind a metal spine. That greatly improves the acoustic performance, but also, as you can see, does wonders for the design detailing. Every model in the range, from the smallest to the largest, introduces this new aluminium plate at the top. This both greatly improves the acoustic performance by stiffening up the system, but also provides a perfect carrier for that leather by Connolly detailing. And one last thing you'll notice is all of the models with plinths have a revised form for that plinth, both to improve acoustic performance, but also design detailing and stability. Now this is a new 804D4. And as you can see, it's sporting that beautiful reverse wrap cabinet construction, which by itself makes the cabinet much stiffer and quieter than before. But we've gone further than that. On top of that, we have the aluminium top plate, which further braces up the system, improvements to the matrix, and most significantly, the addition of an aluminium plate on the inside face of the cabinet. What that does is provide a fantastic mechanical location point for all those drive units to bolt into and makes the cabinet even quieter than before. Now, what does that mean in practice? What we're gonna do is look at a simulation. This simulation first, you can see, is an older generation 804D3, and it's taken at around 700 Hertz. With simulations, what we do is use a combination of movement and color to show how energy or vibration is moving through a system. Essentially, the more movement and the warmer the colors, the more vibration there is in unwanted areas. And as you can see, there's a fair amount of that going on at the front of the cabinet, exactly where the drive units are. Move across to a new 804D4, and as you can see, we've solved that problem beautifully. Instead of all that unwanted vibration, the cabinet is almost completely inert at the same frequency. And that translates into a much more believable listening experience with less sound of the loudspeaker cabinet itself. We can look at a similar comparison on 800 and 801. First, you can see an older generation 800 D3, this time at around 300 Hertz. And you can see, again, that vibration, that unwanted velocity moving through the cabinet. Compare that to a new 801D4, and as you can see, again, massive improvements in quietness, and as a result, a more believable listening experience than ever. Now, how have we enabled that on 801D4? Well, it has that reverse wrap cabinet, it has that aluminum plate, but in addition, it has a lot more metal elsewhere as well. Of course, the metal turbine head, the aluminum top plate we discussed, big improvements to the metal bracing on the matrix assembly, and the addition of a steel bottom plate too. The combination of all of these things make this loudspeaker cabinet the quietest we have ever produced. Moving on to internal components, all stereo models now benefit from rear mounted crossovers. We're gonna begin by looking in close detail at our aerofoil base cone. Here, we've introduced the foam anti-resonance plug. This lives at the heart of the voice curl at the center of the cone, and what it does is support that and prevent it from going out of shape as the loudspeaker driving it goes lower in frequency. The result is more accurate, less distorted bass. So let's go to the other end of the loudspeaker and talk about high frequency. Here we've introduced multiple changes, beginning most obviously with a new elongated form for our solid body tweeter assembly. Now that longer form in itself improves the performance of the diamond dome by reducing the resonant frequency along the length of the tube. At the same time, we've also improved the decoupling system that joins the solid body assembly to the top of the turbine head or the top of the cabinet. That two-point decoupling system greatly improves the sense of openness and spaciousness, and it's applicable whether the product has a turbine head, as you can see here, or on the top of a loudspeaker such as the 805 and the 804. Finally, and in many ways the most exciting news of all, is the transformation we've delivered to our mid-range cone performance. We're carrying across our continuum cone technology. At the same time, we've done lots of work to improve both our decoupling and the motor systems in our chassis. But the key change is something entirely new and quite revolutionary in drive unit design, and that's this part right here. This is our brand new suspension system, and what it does is replace the role of a conventional fabric spider like this. This is a traditional fabric spider, the suspension that generations of loudspeakers have used. 
It supports and centers the voice coil and is a key part of the controlled movement of the cone as it operates. What we've discovered is that in the course of its normal movement, a spider generates a small amount of sound. Effectively, it's like a very small speaker cone operating behind the main speaker cone. Now, solving that problem required some unconventional thinking, and this is the result. As you can see, it's a very open structure. We call it the Biomimetic Suspension, or BMS, and what it does is play that same pivotal role within the loudspeaker drive unit as a conventional fabric spider. But, and here's the key bit, it does all of that without generating any of that unwanted noise. This is how much sound the new biomimetic suspension generates at the same frequency as the fabric spider you saw before. And this is how the two compare side by side. As you can see, it's an extraordinary difference in performance and one that is clearly audible in the mid-range sound quality of the new range. Today we're gonna to go behind the scenes and we're gonna show you some of the technology, the craft, and most importantly, the passion that goes into the making of the world's best performance loudspeakers. all begins with this. This is our basic level raw material. It's a single sheet of beach. Our cabinets are made from multiple layers. What we're doing is using the inherent pliability of beach to our advantage that allows us to curve it. And at the same time, we're using multiple layers of beach arranged in an alternating grain structure. And we use that alternating grain structure with the grains running in different directions to add that stiffness. It's essentially a bit like an engineered wooden floor. Now, each layer of beach is separated by a layer of dry glue. It's a new process we've introduced for the latest generation of 800 series diamond. So layer of wood, layer of dry glue, layer of wood, layer of dry glue, and so on. So all those layers of wood and glue and or veneer go together, and then we heat the whole thing and put it onto a forming press. The forming press is a hugely powerful hydraulic system that basically pushes down onto the wood and curves it into the right construction. At the same time, we heat the whole thing up to somewhere between 135 and 140 degrees Celsius. Roughly 20 to 25 minutes later, we have a completed loudspeaker cabinet, which is ready to come out of the forming press and go onwards to be machined. So after we've taken that cabinet and taken it from the press tool, the next thing is to bring it round here to one of these. This is a five-axis CNC cutter, a robot cutter. And of course, what we're trying to do there is cut away all of those rough edges that you saw just now being formed on the press tool to create something that we can build into a complete loudspeaker cabinet. Now, it's really important at this stage that the cuts that we make are as precise and as accurate as we possibly can make them, because what we're trying to do is take that form, that wrap form, and join it up to other elements, including tops, bottoms and internal component parts. They could be made of wood, they could be made of metal. So the precision of the fit is all important. Our accuracy of the cutting is plus or minus 0.2 of a millimeter. After the loudspeaker has been taken out of the CNC cutter, the next stage is to bring it to one of these, which is a device we call the spreader. What the spreader does is allows us to open up the cabinet ever so slightly, just enough to be able to slide in the internal components, and in particular, the matrix assembly, which we use to reinforce the cabinet in all directions. So the spreader will grab the sides, slightly open it up, we slide the completed matrix assembly, glue it in place, close the cabinet back up together, and then it will sit here under pressure for two hours. After that, it will come off and sit for a further two hours just to completely cure off, and at that point, what we've created is our completed loudspeaker cabinet. So the next step, once you've taken the cabinet and got it together, is to bring it in here to the sanding area, where we're going to work to make sure that we get everything we need for a perfect finish. There are two parts to this process. First, we use a very sophisticated robot sander. That works on two things, the pre-programmed coordinates that it needs to know to work on a specific model. So, for example, an 804 as against an 802D4. They obviously have different shapes, and the robot needs to understand that. But it's also going to use a force feedback sensor. That makes sure that it reaches out and touches, effectively, the surface area of the cabinet and never overpresses at any given point. It's constantly monitoring the amount of feedback it gets as it runs its sanding disc over the surface area of the cabinet. After it's been off the robot sander, it will always come through human process for final checking. The operators here, very skilled guys, will go through all of the work the robot's just done, make sure it's 100% and, if needs be, finish any final areas and details by hand. 
Our paint process is applied by robot. We've got an automated paint spray robot you can see behind me, plus this oven chamber around here. What this is doing is moving the products through the paint process and then taking them back round through the oven, the stoving oven, which is baking them in each instance before they then come back round to receive more coats of paint. The paint robot will apply more coats in the first instance, then we're going to take these and what's called flatten them back to get them really smooth to remove any surface imperfections. Then they'll come back in here again and receive further four layers of paint in this particular instance on this black model. So eight coats of paint in total. After it leaves here, it will then go into our warehouse where it will sit for two weeks. And we do that to allow the paint to cure off, to become really hard. Only then can we machine polish it. So this is our polishing area. What we do here is take the cabinets that have been finished and prepared and bring them across to produce that high gloss sheen that's necessary for a piano gloss black finish. That takes two processes. First, we're going to put them into the robot polisher. That operates very similarly to the robot sander that you saw before. The difference, of course, is instead of a sanding head, it's using a polishing compound head instead. It takes around 70 minutes for a cycle time after which the operators here will take the product out of the robot polisher and finish it by hand. Again, very similar to what you saw in the sanding area. So this is one area of the factory where we can't show you all the details, and this is the reason why. This is where we produce our famous continuum cone. What we're doing here is taking the raw material and turning it into a finished loudspeaker drive unit. The precise details of how remain a closely guarded secret, but the key point is the finished cone will leave here, will go onto our drive unit assembly line before going forward into our 800 series diamond loudspeakers. So this is the tweeter assembly line. What we're doing here is taking the diamond dome and then we're going to be joining that into the surround, the voice coil, the diaphragm mounting plate and the magnet all very small and precise detail work that requires a lot of specific skill. That's then joined into the solid body tweeter assembly, which is milled from a single piece of aluminium. The whole thing then joined up as a complete diamond dome tweeter assembly is tested before it's brought downstairs to the final product assembly line. What we do here is take all of the high quality capacitors, resistors and the other component parts that go into our crossovers and assemble them exclusively by hand. So everything's hand soldered, each individual complete board is tested and then the whole thing's put together onto one of these, which is the crossover spine. That whole thing again is then tested before it's packed and taken down to a final product assembly line. This part of the factory is all about what we call by hand process. It's using individuals rather than machines to create that perfect combination of finish and quality on the products that we're working on. In this particular case, the turbine head that you can see here, this is a raw metal component as it arrives in the factory. It's gonna be first sanded and prepared, then it's gonna be painted by hand in the chamber you can see behind me, and then later it's gonna again be polished by hand to create the ultimate finish before it goes downstairs to our final production line. One of the things you'll notice as you go down the final product assembly line is none of the operators are wearing gloves. Now, that's deliberate. In fact, what we do is encourage people to remove jewellery. If they have wedding rings, they have to tape them up to make sure they can't possibly damage or mark the product. But all the same, human skin is actually a really good way of handling a product and making sure that you can't drop it. Of course, it does deposit fingerprints in the process, but all we do at the very end is clean those off before the product's finally packed. One of the key differences between the wooden cabinets and the painted cabinets is the wooden cabinets are created right from the start as pairs. So the veneers that we use are bookmatched left to right. They travel around the whole factory from the first moment of creation all the way through to being packed as paired loudspeakers. So here we are, we've come to the end of our journey. This is one of our final product assembly lines. From here, what we're going to do is bring together all of the processes that you've seen as we've gone around the factory together, all of those different elements, those component parts, and of course, those completed, finished, and polished cabinets. And we're going to turn it into a finished, complete loudspeaker. 